Susie, so good to see you again. How are you? Oh my God. Hi, Risa. So good to see you too. I'm well. Thank you. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Um, I hope you're not sweating too much down there in Mexico right now. Yeah, you know what? I will take this sweat anytime, any day over snow. So no, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. I don't complain. I love it. <laughs> Smart woman. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, for my yoga practice is amazing too. Like right now is my favorite time of year to practice because with the heat and it being so warm, body's open, nothing is stiff. No, it's great. I love it. So <laughs> that's awesome. It's like having hot yoga, right? Bikram, wherever you go. 100%. 100%. I don't even need the 101 degree room. Not that it's 101 <laughs> degrees here, mind you. Don't worry. Not quite that hot. <laughs> well, today we actually are going to talk about something a little bit different. And um, okay. we're going to be talking about the Mayan train, right? The <gasps> This train that I remember like when I was in playa i guess a year and a half ago mm -hmm. I saw, you know you saw construction everywhere and everyone it's like yep. the buzzword that kind of has been happening for the last few years and it looks like yep. it's actually going to get completed which is huge it's massive and i am excited to be able to see all the work that is being done with it because, I mean, sometimes you hear things here and it's like, are they going to get done? Are they not going to get done? Who knows? It'd be great if it was, but who knows? And one thing that encourages me about the Mayan train is that I see a lot of work that is really, truly happening. Um, I think it's something that is going to be great, not only for the state of Quintana Roo, but for all the states that comprise the Yucatan Peninsula. Because this train... Actually, so why don't you go actually... Can you kind of go sure. through, actually, can you kind of go through and tell us, like, what is the route? Like, where where is this train going to go? Okay, so this is the biggest thing, and I think everybody's going to love the fact that it's doing this. So a lot of people originally thought that it was going to be just for the state of Quintana Roo, which is the state where I am, where, you know, Cancun, Playa del Carmen, the Riviera Maya is. But it's going to connect the five states of the Yucatan Peninsula. So to make it easy for everybody, let's just start with Cancun. So say the train is going to go from Cancun and it's going to go through Playa del Carmen, through Tulum, through Bacalar, leaving the state of Quintana Roo, going into the state of Yucatan, uh, where Merida is. You know, just that that's a place that a lot of people know. So going through the state of Yucatan is also going to move into the state of Chiapas. Um, it's going to go into Campeche and Tabasco. So it's going to be like a big circle that is going to go around the whole, all of those five states. So what I am excited about is that it's going to make places uh, like Chiapas, like Campeche, much more accessible. I mean, even Yucatan or Tabasco, like it's going to make all of these places much more accessible to um, us locals, but for tourists, for everybody to be able to discover a lot of other different areas um, other than Quintana Roo, which I love and I want everybody to come and visit here. But these other states have a lot to offer, too. And sometimes they're maybe not as well known or as traveled because the accessibility is not quite as easy. Uh, Cancun is like the busiest international airport in all of Mexico. So for people to come here is quite easy. I mean, there are so many direct flights from so many places around the world that it's just easy to come. But sometimes just leaving the state, you just don't know where to go or what you want to do. And also for just, let's just talk about the state of Quintana Roo in general. The travel times are going to be cut big time because now you're not going to maybe have to sit in traffic on the van to take you from the airport all the way to, to Tulum. You know, you'll be able to access the train and the train having just limited stops is going to cut that travel time as well. So it's going to open even the area of Tulum even more. And beyond Tulum, um, in the Costa Maya, which is still in the state of Quintana Roo, Bacalar. Bacalar is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful location with lagoons. Um, it is starting to gain um, a lot of popularity 
because it's still small, it's very pretty, um, and people are what and are, are now venturing out a little farther than than Tulum. So that's like the next place that they're looking at. So how far is it from Tulum? It's a uh, two hours uh, by car. So. Well, yeah, the way I drive. Okay, so no, I'm kidding. No, but yeah, it's like two hours. <laughs> Construction has been booming in Quintana Roo, whole Riviera Maya for years yes. now. Um, you know, you drive down the streets of Playa and you inevitably always run into some sort of construction. Um, yep. Are you finding or hearing that that's actually starting to happen in other pl- parts of the states where this train is going to actually be? Is it, you know, is it a place where people should kind of be kind of perking up their ears for potential investment or potential relocation? I mean, what are you kind of seeing how how much this train is actually going to change the actual kind of lifestyle and just um, quality of life for everybody in that region? Okay, so no, that's a really good question. So um, it is, it is starting to open up other areas a little bit farther west, say in Playa del Carmen, Tulum, Cancun, in these areas where the train is going to go through that now you're starting to see new residential developments that are starting to come up. And what I am really digging of seeing like these developments or these things that are starting to come up is that a lot of them are really working on keeping it eco-friendly. Um, so, uh, for example, let's talk about Puerto Morelos. Out by where the train is going to be, there is a small town that is very close to where one of the stops of the train station is going to be. It's called Leona Vicario. And out by that area, which is like um, you go out through it by a, a road called Ruta de los Cenotes, there are some developments that are starting to take place out there and and they have been over the last couple of years uh, where they're like doing maybe like larger plots of land, residential developments with a lower density. You're still able to build a nice home, but you have a lot of greenery around and you have a lot of um, what people want also sometimes, which is a little more space. And because you're going to have the train out there, the transportation is also going to be better getting to and from, say, from like your little jungle home oasis paradise into town because it's not going to be a challenge. So it is starting to create a new, I mean, yeah, like maybe like a new market. Um, one thing that we've had here is um, a lot of people wanting to spend more time in this area uh, f- away from their homes, be because they can work uh, remotely or because they just feel like they really like the, the vibe that Mexico has to offer. And, and, I, I, and I talk to people daily, constantly, just wanting to know how they can spend more time here and what are the things that are out there. Um, it's interesting also that uh, this is making people be more open to not wanting to be just like on the beach side. Because one um, thing about obviously wanting to be on the beach side, it's amazing, but there is less land, there is less space, and the costs are obviously much higher. The price point goes up. So um, sometimes when somebody has, uh, and I don't want to say like a limited budget because that's not the case because there's some amazing places that are, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars plus, you know, because they're big. Um, so, but it does open, open like the opportunity for people to get a little more adventurous, to, to want to explore a little more and maybe even like fall in love with something that they didn't even think that, you know, that, that, that was available. Um, a lot of these developers are also doing in this kind of communities, you know, they're putting in amenities. So it's not that you just have your house and that's it. You know, they have like nice natural pools or they might have cenotes, nature trails and all of these things. So it makes it to where, I mean, you can either have it as a vacation rental part of the year and then the other part of the year you live here. Um, They're putting in also like the electric so that there is access 
um, where they're starting to have to work a little more and that's what is going to like start taking more place is for example like the fiber optic cable for internet and stuff because oh, right. although it is available I mean it's still not great but because the train is going to be going through all these areas then these are all things that are coming and uh, somebody that has the foresight and a little bit of the patience for these things to catch up they're going to be making smart moves and you're still closer to the beach, even here, even in this area than, I mean, wherever you might be living in other parts of the world, unless you live by the beach, of course. That's amazing. I mean, seriously, like I, I feel like that's one of the bigger projects that I've heard of. You know, people talk about big, you know, public infrastructure projects, but this one's huge um, in so many ways. And so, I'd love to hear your thoughts a little bit, though. You know, it's a cautionary tale about, you know, buying pre-construction, right, and working yeah. with developers. So there are certain things like people shouldn't just dive in just because this train is coming. You know what I mean? And um, sure. they see they, you know, they see a pretty PDF about you know some new development that's coming to town. They really need to do their homework. And I know that you emphasize this a lot. So what are some of the things that people should really be thinking about if they're serious and they want to take a look? Like, what are some of the towns that you think that they should be looking in? And then if, they're, if they are seriously going to think about purchasing property and it be pre-construction or like, what, they sh what should they be looking for? That is a great question and that is something that I am really big on just because um, the growth of this area obviously has brought a lot of new developers to this area. And uh, with new developers, um, you have things that, I mean, or for me personally, like whenever I am looking at projects, I tend to be very discerning if it's somebody that I don't know. Why are these things? If they have never been here for building, developing before, and they don't know what they're doing, it's going to be a bit um, difficult because the, the climate here is brutal. The soil here is brutal. If you don't know what you're doing, for example, soundings for the ground. I mean, like you have to dig down and make sure that you have no cenotes, no caves underneath, depending on where you're developing or whatever you're doing. Because when you have those, I mean, the ground could fall off. And then, you know, where is your house? <laughs> where is your project? So these are things that are important, um, the experience that a developer might have. Um, what kind of track history do they have? And, uh, I mean, are their papers legal? For example, you know, they might be selling something really beautiful. But do they really own the land? Do they have the permits already, everything in order to do what they say they're going to do? Um, so, so these are all things that are very important. And I feel that sometimes um, there are people that go out and they want to deal directly with the developer. And they're in every right absolutely to do so. Because they feel, well, if I can deal directly with the developer, I can get a better deal and I can do this and I can do that. Fantastic. But is a developer ever going to tell you uh, or their representatives, oh, uh, my project is terrible. Nothing is in order and uh, you're going to lose your money. Of course, not. <laughs> they're not going to do that. I'd be crazy. They would be a very bad uh, developer if they were doing that or their sales team. It would not be good. But when you have an independent agent that is assisting you, you know, if they have taken the time, which, you know, like uh, most of us do, a lot of us do, to get to know not only the projects, but who's behind those projects before even suggesting them to clients. Because at the end of the day, anybody that is purchasing, first of all, they have worked their butt off to, uh, to put the money together to invest into what is their dream about owning a place in Mexico. And that is something that is very uh, important to always keep in mind. So you want to make sure as an agent that you protect those buyers, you know, and that, I mean, go with a certified, a licensed realtor 
and I mean, and always use an attorney. And I don't mean like the developer's attorney because the developer's attorney is being paid by the developer. It should always be an independent attorney that is working for you, that is going to do the due diligence and the work for you. Um, that is something that I always offer my clients. Um, I work with a fantastic team of attorneys in Playa del Carmen. You've met them. And, uh, and they're, they're, they're very good. Um, I've known them for many, many years. They handle all my personal business. I mean, if that says anything. But um, it's, it's always, like, they're always happy to do the consultation. Independently of uh, if the person is interested in hiring them or not, they can hire anybody they want, but at least they've been able to talk to somebody about the legal implications of a property here. And is somebody that can tell them, well, this is how, you know, any attorney you hire should protect you. Right. Absolutely. And to be honest, I mean, the fact that you're perfectly bilingual, right? You're originally from Colombia. So yes. I think that that is something that's in your pocket that, you know, perhaps some other real estate agents may not have, right? They either don't speak English or they don't speak Spanish well enough to be able yes. to understand like the nuances, right? There's like nuances of language. There's also nuances of culture and body language mm -hmm. and, and business, right? Absolutely. Um, so I, and that's really important. I think that real estate agent um, client relationship is critical, especially Huge. when dealing with, you know, buying property in Mexico as a foreigner, right? Um, it's huge, 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 huge. Do you see and any, do you foresee any of these particular cities being affected, like their real estate market being affected? Like, do you think it'll really affect a Playa del Carmen or Merida or Cancun where it's already very popular? Or is it going to be more likely hit, you know, um, more, of the, more of the smaller towns where this train is coming? Well, I mean, like the, the bigger cities obviously encompass a large area, you know, more than maybe is even being developed now out of popularity. But obviously with these big areas, you also have like smaller towns that might be attached to it. For example, you know, close to Cancun, in between Cancun and Puerto Morelos, out west, there is a small town called Leona Vicario. That is a place that you're going to hear more of because the train is going to go very close to Leona Vicario and there is a lot of growth that is happening in that area with residential developments. So, for example, that's like one of them. Um, in Playa, you're going to see more development in the west side um, because of where the train is going to go. There are some residential projects out there, but you're going to see other things. Um, I feel that where you're going to see a lot of growth is going to be even beyond Tulum and even beyond Tulum. Um, in Tulum, you're still like Tulum is much bigger than what people really know the area of it. And uh, like the urban development plan, I mean, on the west side, there's also like a bunch of land that it's just in the process of still being developed. So the train is absolutely 100% going to propel that. But even moving uh, south, you know, like towards Muyil, like you're going to have growth there. Um, going towards um, like west, going towards Coba, like maybe the Francisco Umay area. You, there is already some growth there but you'll see more. So, so yeah, so towns even around the area where these big cities are, or these areas are, you're going to see more. As you move south, um, Bacalar, again, which I mentioned before, it's an area that you are going to see growth because there is, there is going to be a train station in Bacalar and um, areas close to Bacalar like uh, Buena Vista. So, so as far as like for the state, you're going to see, you're going to see those areas start gaining a little bit more of a buzz, a little bit more popular, well, probably a lot more popularity, especially because there's still like plenty of space um, where uh, people are going to have to, and it's good when they have the foresight to see beyond, I want to live by the beach. Yes, I do too. But well, actually, now that I live here, I don't. <laughs> Right. <laughs> just, uh, just, I mean, you know what, like all that salt, 
ends up just like corroding sometimes like the wires and stuff. And so no. So, but I like to be close, but you know what? Even if it's like a, a 10 minute drive, it's not bad. It's not bad for, for me to be able to get to the beach. So I digress. But um, so if you can like get past the just wanting to be really, really close to the beach and just go a little bit out west, uh, something that I definitely feel that not everybody fully appreciates and is something that after living here, I have completely fallen in love with is the beauty of jungle living. Mm. Because like... There is such peace and serenity that you can have at a space that is more of like a jungle setting that, I mean, it's like next to none. And this area is like completely magical because there is like lots of cenotes even all around. So even in places that you're like driving out and you don't even know, there is like this beautiful, just like, you know, underwater pools and everything that you can just go spend the day with and just like be able to sit there and be like, oh man, yeah, that's cool. That's like amazing. And, and, and be just completely blown away. So, um, so what I, I hope that happens is that when, when, when people are starting to like discover all these new places that they'll maybe see themselves still being in this beautiful Caribbean paradise, but not only just like counting on the ocean, but like seeing it for everything else that it has to offer. Yes. Very well said. Very well said. And cenotes, for anybody who has not seen a cenote, they are so special and so spectacular. Oh. You have to see them in person. And the Yucatan mm -hmm. is like, they're not all over Mexico. They're mainly in the Yucatan Peninsula, if I'm, yep. if I'm correct, right? Um, yes, correct. there are just these underwater pools and the, the water is just beautiful. And, um, but anyway, I did want, so as we kind of wrap this up, um, sure. I kind of just wanted to get your thoughts, like, you know, so do you recommend people visiting these towns? I mean, these towns are, you know, a lot of the towns are not touristy at all. Um, quite yet. No. Um, they may become so, yep. and who knows which ones will become more popular. Um, it's probably like what Playa del Carmen was like 25 years ago, right? Um, or, yeah, basically, or, yes, <laughs> exactly. That's what so, you're looking at. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you, how do you recommend people start their research? So, I mean, I like, as far as like being able to wrap, first of all, call me. <laughs> so, True. but, um, but like, um, second of all, you can Google the Mayan train and you'll be able to find maps and you'll be able to see, um, as far as like hotel and accommodations and things like this is better still, obviously to stay in like, Cancun or Puerto Morelos, fly, I mean, like a city wherever you choose and um, maybe even arrange for a day. You know, there's also like a lot of tour guides and, and, and people that do all of these things uh, that, that can take you out and maybe show you so you can explore all these little pockets. Um, if you haven't been to Bacalar, I would strongly suggest... Uh, like I said, you're calling me, I'll go with you to Bacalar, no problem. No, but, but I mean, like visiting. So you're able to get to know everything that surrounds that area. So you see the lagoons and you see all, like everything, what that has to offer. So yeah, just doing like little trips and just being a little adventurous on that. But staying within the bigger cities right now would be the smarter move. And then just maybe doing like day trips. So you can see, for example, like if you go down the Ruta de los Cenotes, you know, the Cenotes route, you can make a day of it, you know, and you can tell the driver, oh, I mean, can you take us towards like Leona Vicario? We want to see where like where the train is going and, and, and you'll be able to see. And believe me, you can see the construction because it's not small, it's very, very big. So that's, awesome. that's what I would suggest to do. And as you're like, because everybody's always in a different stage and process into what they're doing and different timelines. Um, I would definitely strongly suggest if you're looking to invest, always the sooner the better. Just because the land is limited, projects like all of these things 
are limited. And although there is a lot of it, as there is growth, as there is progress, as there is anything, I mean, the prices climb up because people do like to come here. Um, like it's, it's important to just, like I said, you know, as far as like doing the homework and being able to look is talk to people that are qualified, make sure that always, always, always legal advice, somebody that is going to be able to protect your interest and, uh, and be able to sit down and process so that when you're making the decision to do anything, that all your questions are answered and that you're like calm that you're calm, that you feel good, that you feel confident about what you're doing. Because there is a really good chance that when people go back home, and this happens all the time, they're going to tell friends, family, whatever, and everybody's going to be like, oh my God, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You're going to buy in Mexico? And, <laughs> and if somebody's like calm and they're sure, they're going to be like, yeah, nope, I'm good. I'm good. I'm confident. Yep. I have no problem doing it. And then those people that tell them, oh, my God, are you crazy? Are going to be the same people that are going to be like, so when is your place going to be ready? I want to go visit. (laughs) (laughs) So true. So true. So, Susie, if people want to reach out to you, where do they go and how do they find you online? Okay, great. Well, um, so I have my own web page. Um, is uh, susiemcdonald.com and is S-U-S-I and then McDonald is M-A-C so susiemcdonald.com uh, you can find me there you can reach me there um, and then you'll be able to find my Facebook my Instagram uh, under Susanna McDonald real estate agent uh, you should be able to reach out to me info at susiemcdonald.com is my email address and I will always get back to you if I happen to be out on tour or something then I mean there might not be like right away but I promise I always get back to everybody one way maybe you're doing I yoga don't... not during a yoga practice though no not doing a yoga practice can't do that oh yeah if I'm teaching class then I'm not gonna answer right away and uh, yeah if you want to come for like awesome yoga classes and yoga experiences in the Riviera Maya call me <laughs> that's awesome Susie thank you so it. so much Well, Risa, thank you. I appreciate it. It's always such a pleasure to chat with you. 